Hey everybody, so I've chosen to go live instead of faffing about with uh, recording and editing and stuff like that. Um, so I want to discuss what, what's happened to my last operation. I don't mean last as in last one I had, I mean last as in the last stage that I haven't had yet and why I haven't had it. Um, so let me just shut this window a sec. Oh, two seconds. So yeah, um, basically I've got one more operation to go, um, and that is for the erectile device. So I had my previous operation on the 28th of November 2016 and uh, nothing's happened since. Why? Um, because I live in the UK, that's why. Hey, Karin. <laughs> um, so because I live in the UK and we have a system called the NHS, um, basically, basically there's delays. Um, at, so I was told in the November that I'd be having my next stage slash final stage in the February, just gone. Um, YouTube crashed, but I'm here now. Cool. Um, so yeah, I was told I'd be having my final stage in February, just gone. Um, then I was told in January, waiting time to shit over here, in other words. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so then I was told on January 6th when I was called to have like a post-op review that my 12 weeks wait will start then, which pissed me off quite a bit because by that point I was already six weeks post-op and I kind of thought I was halfway through the wait, you know? Um, Kobe, hi! Um, so, yeah, I was a bit miffed, to say the least. Then I thought, okay, you know, it's 12 weeks, it's, you know, not the longest time in the world, I'll be okay, you know, things will sort themselves out. And then I had a, another sort of like post-op review on the 20, 26th of March, and I was told in that phone call, my 12 week wait starts then. Um, so by this point it was starting to really grate on me because, you know, this was the third time now that I'd been told my 12 weeks started. Um, so, rather annoying. Um, I then phoned them on the 28th of April, and I said, you know, whereabouts am I? Uh, am I closer to getting a date? You know, what's going on? Because I've been told this, this and that. And they told me that my 12 week wait started then. <laughs> so, um, well, it's uh, indescribable to be honest. Like, I know that, you know, we've got it good in the UK. I know that, um, you know, I know it's great that we've got the NHS and stuff, but this is kind of the problems that we face. Two seconds. How is your urethra? I heard that it can be harder with pubic phalloplasty. Uh, I don't know quite what you mean by harder, uh, unless you mean like the recovery time. The recovery time was longer. Um, it took quite a while actually um, to recover from that, um, but it's fine. Like in regards to like standing to pee now, it's fine. I actually want to make a YouTube video where I basically record myself standing to pee. It seems to be something I get asked quite a lot. Um, and it's, I don't know, I like, I, um, I like to answer all those questions, so, you know, loads of people say, you know, say to me about, <laughs> basically say I'd love to see it, um, so, I figured I'd do it, why not, you know, um, I was gonna prop, you know, my, uh, my iPad on my toilet right there, and just get it out, um, and for anyone that's concerned about, you know, YouTube restrictions and stuff like that, providing I've got a age restriction on it, and, um, what was the other thing? Age restriction. Oh yeah, so providing I've got an age restriction on the video, and it's deemed as nudity for educational purposes, um, then we're good to go, we're all good to go. I think I've got a few more comments there, two seconds. Oh my god, waiting is just so annoying. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Daddy, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Never been called Daddy before. Well, I have, but just not that often. Um, 
Yes, that's what I meant. Thanks. Thank you for what you're doing for the trans community. Uh, you're totally welcome, Karen. I mean, um, you know, to be honest, I just stand here and chat. And I just say what I, what I know. I just talk about what I know. You know, I can only talk about my experiences. I can't talk about anybody else's. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, in regards to the documentary, which has been... They've filmed all my operations so far. Um, a lot of people are asking me when it's going to be out and stuff like that. The documentary release date is actually waiting on this final operation. So nothing can get released, nothing can get edited or anything like that um, until this final operation happens, which is even more annoying again. So yeah, until I have my last op and that's filmed and then we'll film a little bit afterwards, basically to sort of wrap it up. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. There's no information I can give out because we don't even know ourselves. Um, what I do know is that the documentary will be on BBC One. Um, it'll start off on BBC One Wales, then it'll go uh, to Network, uh, which basically means across the UK. Um, maybe if we're really lucky it might go across the world, I don't know, um, but we'll see. Your chest looks awesome. Oh, thank you. Hey, Jay. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Hey, buddy. So annoyed for you that it's taking so long, really taking the piss. Uh, you should be soon. You were only one week after me in the last stages. <laughs> and I'm annoyed for you, mate. Keep your chin up. Do you know what, Nick? As I was reading that comment then, I was like, yeah, my friend had his surgery just before me and he's just had his last off. I was actually meant to message you earlier and ask how you were doing. So um, drop me a WhatsApp and let me know. Sorry, my cat is uh, dying to come in. Come on. Here we go. Um, this is Obi. He was quite young. Um, and can't, apparently can't be away from me. <laughs> can you go to spy? He's super small at the minute, as you can see. Um, and very needy. That is one of the cutest cats I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, Obi, see what you're getting. Look at those people love you. Mwah. Look at he's, he's not looking too pleased at the minute. Mwah. Good time. Okay, so. That's what's happened to my last stop. Obviously, anyone watching right now, feel free to ask me literally anything. I am an open book. He is a best mate. Look at that face. I'll drop you a message. Wicked Nick, thank you. What a cute kitty, just like the owner. <laughs> Seamless talking. Seamless. Um, so, yeah, honestly, feel free to ask me anything. I'll make a massive point in saying that I am an open book. I will answer any question. No question is too, like, rude or uh, too... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> invasive or anything like that. Why do you keep coming up when, Google, when I Google trans tattoos? Um, I'll tell you why I keep coming out when you Google trans tattoos. It's because, um, as you read the title of the news article you sent me, basically um, a media source in the UK got hold of my story a few years ago and they rang me up and they said, you know, what's the deal? Um, so because I'm so open and honest, I basically said to them, um, I'm going to be having my lower surgery soon. Oh, me. Um, I'm going to be having my lower surgery soon. Uh, and I may use the skin off my arm. <laughs> this arm? No, wrong arm. That arm. Um, so I basically said I'm, I may be using the skin off my arm. If I do, it will basically be a tribal penis. Um, and they were literally like, oh my god, this is front page news. Like, so they published the story. As far as I'm aware, 47 papers across the world took on that story. Um, and I've got to be honest, I googled my name and the headlines are quite amusing. Um, there was stuff like sex swap DJ set to have what was it tattooed genitalia. Um, there was um, oh, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna Google my name now. I'm looking awesome, dude. Thank you, Dean. Does your penis erect without erection device? No, it does not. My penis right now is about as much use as. Uh, don't know. <laughs> it's it's literally about as firm as toilet paper. 
Um, no, I know there's nothing wrong with a tattoo schlong, as you say, Nick, but um, I, I ended up choosing pubic phalloplasty. Any advice for a girlfriend of a trans man? Um, yeah. <laughs> be patient um, and be strong because it's equally as hard for you as it is for us, um, just obviously in different ways. But um, from what, you know, when me and Cannon were together, everything that she ever went through, um, you know, she was literally my rock. Uh, she supported me. She still does support me through thick and thin. Um, but don't get me wrong, there were times when it was really hard on me and I wasn't the best person to be around. And she still... She still came in um, and, you know, offered to support, like, without even, like, thinking twice. It was unconditional. But, yeah, I just I just reckon, you know, sometimes, as, as a girlfriend of a trans man, I reckon, you know, you, you'll sit there sometimes and say, can I do this? Is it worth it? He's really pissing me off or, you know, it seems like it's all about him and stuff like that. And I promise you, you know, that that does wear off. Like, it's, it's not, it doesn't go on forever. We don't mean to be like that. You know, testosterone and operations and stuff, it's a very, very hard road to go down. Um, but you come out better for it at the other side. And, you know, with me and Kelly, if anything, it just made us stronger. Um, I know, obviously, you know, we're not together anymore. That had nothing to do with, like, how tough the journey was. Um, we, I mean, we still live together. <laughs> You know? So, Obi, move. Um, so, two seconds, I'm just gonna... I need to remember these, um... How is it now that my... My cat and dog suddenly have an interest in me? They haven't looked at me all day. Okay, news. Sex swap DJ to have new genitalia made out of skin from his arm. Uh, the final step to becoming a man. How wrong is that? Uh, transgender DJs... What's it say? Transgender DJ's tattooed arm will be used to make new tribal print genitalia. Great. Uh, next one. Transgender DJ to have stripy penis tattooed. Uh, what? Transgender DJ to have stripy penis made from tattooed skin on his arm. God, that's so original. Who thought of these? Oh, and I am in. I am on Google as well for an article about a Greg's pasty. That's another story for another day. Um, I did like the headline though. The headline was Greg's British bite off. I like that. Anyone that's British would know that's amazing. Transgender man has penis construction surgery using skin from his arm. Mm, ba -ba 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 -ba. Anything else? This is exactly how doctors build a penis in sex reassignment. <laughs> oh my god, there's some of these I've never seen before. <laughs> uh, this is exactly how doctors build a penis in sex reassignment surgery. And there's a really flattering photo of me. Not. Um, Girls to men star having penis built reveals... Uh, reveals what it's like to physically transition from woman to man. Oh, actually, this was the the article um, written by BuzzFeed. Uh, they actually did a really good job. It was one of the articles, uh, like, actually, probably the only article I ever read that was amazing, absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. My cat's just destroying the house, I'm so sorry. Um, so... What is it? So, I might actually read this out to you guys, if you, if you don't mind. Um, let's see if any comments I've got a sec. Okay, I'll catch up with these comments in a sec. Um, I'm going to read this article, I really hope you guys don't mind. Um, okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Girls to Men star having penis built reveals what it's like to physically transition from woman to a man. When he was just 14 years old, Billy attempted to take his own life. 
because he was unhappy in his female body. Two years later, he tried again. After overdosing, somebody found him and he was rushed to hospital where doctors pumped his stomach and saved his life. It was touch and go for the first 24 hours, but luckily I pulled through. Billy, tell, uh, Billy tells Huffington Post. Um, the nurse asked me the next day why I'd done it, and I said, because nobody cares, she replied. Well, I care. From that moment on, my life changed for the better, because if she cared for me without even knowing me, then I had every reason to live. Billy, 25, is just one of thousands of transgender guys feeling uncomfortable with their bodies, and it's something he's known from the age of four when he was called Connie. I always thought I was a boy, anyway, until I realised I was different from other boys, he explains. I continued to live my life just being me, convinced that my male parts would just appear at some point. As a teenager, I realised that it was never going to happen, and I started to get very depressed, as I didn't know why I felt so wrong, and I didn't like... Uh, I didn't feel like I could tell anyone. The thought of not becoming a man was too distressing to live with, he says. The club DJ features on a new Channel 4 documentary, Girls to Men, which charts his transition from woman to man. After, eight, after an eight-year wait to be prescribed testosterone, he's finally able to begin his physical transition at age 21. Now, Billy is having a penis built, which is going to be made up of skin grafted from around his body. Um, and once all the surgery has been completed, he'll be able to urinate and have sex as a man. I like that bit. The treatment called pubic phalloplasty has been funded by the NHS and involves four stages of construction, which can take up to 18 months. <laughs> Two years later. Billy has had the first stage and is due to undergo three more. The first bit of surgery involves taking the skin from the stomach area to create the penis. While my stomach is open, they do the hysterectomy as well, he says. Then they pull my skin down on my stomach to join it all back up again. It's incredibly tight and I couldn't stand up straight for the first five, for the first five to six weeks, but it does all stretch back out eventually. Uh, in the next couple of stages... <clears throat> It's the next couple of stages of surgery, which will be the most life-changing for Billy. I'll be able to urinate after stage three, as I make the urethra and connect it to my bladder, he explains. I'll be able to have sex after stage four. Woo! The surgery will involve fitting a pump inside his newly built penis, which will look like two straws. I can inflate and deflate the penis using a tiny little pump inside one of my testicles, he explains. The straws fill up with saline fluid, which comes from a small bottle that will be placed into the abdomen somewhere. <laughs> Although I'm not exactly sure where, still true. He says the penis will get really hard and the erection could last for days if he wanted it to. He <laughs> walks. I'm so glad to be on the final road to my transition, he adds. For Billy, living as a trans man is far easier now than it was in his teens. When I was 16, I was bullied immensely to the point of becoming a recluse, he recalls. I hated the thought of going outside because I couldn't bear the thought of having a bad, bad thing said towards me. But nowadays, things are different. I've had my surgery filmed for the Girl to, Girls to Men documentary because I felt more comfortable sharing my story with the world. I feel at peace with society now, he adds. The amount of support I get from my local community as well as the online community is huge and seriously outweighs the hate. There's so much more acceptance for us now and there's no need to feel threatened while walking down the street. He says that while he's had to fight hard, a hard battle for his physical transition, which is still not complete, it's been 100% worth it. Now I just fight to make other trans guys' journeys much easier because I had no one to follow while I was going through this, he says. Being transgender is incredibly hard to live with, but thankfully it's getting easier every day for us and we're not looked at like freaks anymore. His advice to trans men who are struggling is not to get too stressed with it all. Small things like getting a haircut or buying new jeans can make all the difference to how we feel in yourself, he says. Also, be patient with your family. It's hard for them to change too. Even if they seem unaccepting, it's probably because they don't understand and are worried for you. But in his final words of wisdom that are most poignant, always feel free to be who you are and never be ashamed, he says, because one day you could be someone's inspiration and their reason to keep on living. I hope I didn't bore you with that. But yeah, that was the article that um, Huffington Post wrote in 2015. That was, God, that seems like yesterday. Mad. Um... So yeah, um, I'm just gonna catch up on these comments a sec, guys. Do do do. It's quite a lot, wasn't it? Okay, adorable. Okay, thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing the documentary. Yeah, same here. I can't bloody wait to see it. That is one of the cutest cats I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my god. Yeah, cool, cool. He is the best mate. Look at that face. Oh yeah, I read these. Any advice? 
So the girlfriend, yeah, read that. <clears throat> read that one. Read that one. Stripey penis. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the tattoo song, yeah. How did you cope with binding, as you obviously can't bind 24 hours a day? Uh, so how did you deal with the needing to take your binder off around parents and stuff? Um, I was lucky enough that I didn't live with my parents when um, I started binding. I was actually a lot older, because um, I didn't even know binders existed until I was 21. So, um, yeah, I basically... I was already living with my girlfriend at the time. It didn't really bother me. Um, I didn't get as dysphoric as people seem to be getting these days, you know? Like, it seems like trans guys these days literally just just think the world's gonna end when their binder comes off, which is not the case, you know? Um, and to me, I think it's maybe because I was getting older, I don't know, but the comfortability factor seemed so appealing uh, for me. So even though, yes, I enjoyed being, being flat-chested, you know, I'd take my binder off and I'd be like, oh, it just feels so amazing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, but you know, I didn't really deal with it. It just, it just was. How do they remove the hair from the donor area? Um, they don't. Any hair removal is not on the NHS. Uh, if you want any hair removal done, you've got to pay for it yourself. I did not. Um, so I, yeah, have hair growing on it, but I don't really care, to be honest. Nothing a razor council out. Hope you're feeling better, mate. You're looking good. Thank you, Warren. I hope you are too. Um, yeah, I really hope you are. God, you've been through some uh, shit. And your penis. What about my penis? Oh, uh, all right, I get it. Yeah, thank you. My penis is fine. Um, I'm patient, but his mental health is troubling. He's a he's ten years transition, but but gets such down days. He's thinking about getting a release instead of phalloplasty. What's a release? I don't know what a release is, Jody. I'm sorry. Um. I know there's different alternatives of taking tea other than shots. Do you know what they are? Yeah, there's a tea gel, um, which you put on daily. You have to put it on your chest, basically, because um, it can't come into contact with anybody else. But that's the only one I actually know of. Other than that, it's the injection. Um, do any of these new places ask your permission for using your story? They seem like assholes. No, nobody asks your permission. One paper asks permission, the rest of the world just took it. Um, so, yeah, and they don't have to legally either. They don't have to ask your permission. Once one paper publishes it basically it's uh it's like throwing bread to a bunch of pigeons will you have any unwanted tats removed no no way i've already had one unwanted tat removed there that was for the graft for my urethra um don't give monkeys how is your sex life since you since you can get hard i can't get hard yet uh, Nate, that's the last operation that um, I started talking about at the beginning of this video, but I can't actually get an erection yet, so no sex life right now. Plus, I'm single. I don't have a sex life, I'm single. You're finally getting chest hair. Yeah, finally. Look at that. Getting there. That's about all I want, though, so, you know, don't really need any more. Is the phalloplasty of a micro penis any different from the phalloplasty of FTM? I get. I think I get what you're asking, but you asked it wrong. So the the micro penis is the meta, meta metaplasty, something like that. So it's meta and then phallo. They're both FTM. With meta, you can't use it for sex. You can merely stand to be, and it's about this big. So I personally don't know why people choose to have that option. I wouldn't, but um, each to their own. Your story is inspirational. Thank you. Have you lost any sexual pleasure with the type of bottom surgery you chose? Zero whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, I can't feel the skin on my penis, like if someone else were to grab it. And it's weird that I'm saying this, but quite a few people have grabbed it. It's just been out, I think it's just been out of curiosity more than anything. Um, I can't actually feel it. Um, but it doesn't affect the sexual pleasure whatsoever, because if you think about it, uh, my clitoris was buried at the base of my penis. So, um, yeah, basically, that wasn't affected. So... <laughs> so, yeah, still able to orgasm just fine. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Casey. I missed the start of the live. Will I be... Uh, will I be able to explain what's happening with your last surgery? 
Um, basically, Aaron, nobody knows what's happening with my last surgery. It's kind of that was kind of the whole point in starting this video is that um, literally NHS. One more can I say? Nobody even knows. I don't know when it is. I have no dates. Don't know when the documentary is coming out. I literally know nothing. They finally got the catheter out yesterday. I was in hospital for 12 hours and ended up being sedated to have it taken out. Yeah, I did see a status warrant, actually. Um, sorry, mate. My God. I can't even believe what you went through. Um, but, you know, uh, onwards and upwards, as they say. How are you single? You look so good. <laughs> well, I'm bold, for starters. I'm pretty sure that doesn't help. I'm this close to taking a razor to my head because at the minute I've got, like, a little bit of hair. Um, but uh, I personally wouldn't say I was God's gift um, and I'm not fishing because I really don't do that but no um, I mean I, I mean, I've got a lot of like self-confidence issues I think that would interfere with any form of relationship happening anyway um, and I think I set the bar a bit too high maybe I don't know I think I set it I set it too high in regards to thinking who would want to date a man like me that can't even have sex right now. Like, surely that's something that everyone asks if it's on the table straight away, you know? So I just, I think I'll wait. That actually reminds me, when I went for my last post-op review, um, the doctor said, are you in a relationship? And I said, no. And he said, oh, well, what's the point in having this last operation? <laughs> and I was like, I'm not in a relationship because I haven't had the last operation. <laughs> like, if I'm not gonna start dating someone and whatever, well, I can imagine nobody would date me when when I can't even give them anything like that, you know? Weird. I can't believe you said that. It's meta, that's the one. Simple release to make it bigger. Release to make it bigger. I'm really, I'm so sorry, I'm really lost. Either way, meta, I'm not a fan of, personally, at all, actually. Um, so, how can you orgasm if you can't feel your penis? Because I don't need my penis to orgasm, does that? That sounds really bad, doesn't it? Um, unlike uh, cis men, biologically born males, where their sensation is right on the end of their penis, ours isn't. So, our sensation is still in our clitoris, which is what we've always had. That's where the good feeling comes from. Um, obviously I don't have a vagina anymore, so there's nothing inside to give me any pleasure. So it's just all reliable on the clitoris, which is right at the base of my penis, kind of where it's always been. I think it was moved up like a centimetre maybe, so that when I get the erectile device, the two straws will go either side of the clitoris, which will be like in the middle, so it'll be kind of like <laughs> that, I don't know. Um, so apparently the two straws will go either side of it, and then um, when you're like, using it for penetration, apparently it'll like rub against the clitoris and give you pleasure. I mean, hundreds of trans guys have had the surgery before, no one's ever complained about it, trust me, would have heard about it. Um, so I'm just gonna trust the doctor and, and, you know, hope to God it goes well. You look amazing. Thank you, Jessica. So what is the doco? And what's the name of it? Where will I look for it? When it gets released. Um, I haven't got a name for it yet, actually. They've left, well, sort of left the name up to me. I personally really like the name Transfixed for its true definition of Transfixed. Um, but I wanted to put it as Trans-Fixed. Uh, they're slightly worried that that's gonna sound like I needed fixing. Uh, and I get that, I get that, you know, where they're coming from in that. But um, I was a bit gutted because I really like the idea of Transfixed. Because Transfix is basically like fascinating. Um, and you know, I get my dick out on national television, I think that's fascinating. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Anyone got any suggestions, feel free to post them. Um, how come he doesn't know. He doesn't know to, to go through with it. He doesn't know to go through with it. What, he's undecided as to whether he wants surgery at all, or which surgery? It, like, if it's which surgery, then the basic question he's got to ask himself is, do I want to use my penis for sex? Yes, phalloplasty, no, matter. That one. Uh, did you know 
that women mainly orgasm via their clit and not penetration. Yes, I did know that because I was a woman once. Just saying. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty sure meta is release of the clitoris and then they take the skin around the area to create the phallus. Uh, yeah. I've never heard the word. I've never heard the word "release" been used used in that in that uh, context though. But yeah, um, they basically sort of like stretch it out. But it's still, you still can't be used. It can't be used for sex. Um, uh, I know a few guys that have had meta. They love it, um, but they can't use it for sex. Do you still get horny? Oh my god, yeah, yeah, easily, <laughs> too easily. It's worrying. Um, obviously, I'm still on testosterone. Uh, I will be for the rest of my life, um, because I will never produce testosterone myself, same as I would never produce sperm or anything like that. So yeah, still very easily get horny. I don't need to feel my penis to get horny. Do you know how big they can make the a meta penis? I actually <clears throat> don't have a clue. It's not that big. Um, where, I mean, you'd be lucky if you had, like, my thumb's worth. Uh, really lucky, actually. I forgot the size of my nose. Why did you choose to shave your hair? I thought you were having treatment to help hair growth. I am having treatment to help hair growth, but it takes up to 12 months to have any effect. So until then, this is staying off, because I can't be dealing with the bald spot, to be honest. Will you post episodes on your YouTube channel after it is released on TV? That way people outside the UK can watch it as well. You look amazing, dude. Thank you. Um, I can't actually post it on my YouTube channel, no, because I don't have the legal right to do so. Um, my rights stop when that camera is rolling. So basically, whatever I say legally, the second it leaves my mouth, it's theirs. The BBC own it, and that is it. So, no, I, I literally, I wish I could, but I can't. Um, but I will figure out a way of being able to get it out there. Um, I'm hoping, I mean, I can't personally do it, but what happened with Girls to Men is somebody else actually recorded it and uploaded it to YouTube. It was banned from being viewed inside the UK, but I know that outside the UK you could watch it on YouTube. So, fingers crossed, somebody does that. That would be pretty cool. Do -do -do. Uh, I'm pre-op. Top surgery, very dysphoric due to a large chest area, but a full length rather than the one I have. Sports bra type help. I'm fighting with sports looking one. Yeah, I, I had a full length one. Um, not that I was massively chested, I was like a C cup. <clears throat> I had a full length one purely because I loved that it sucked in my hips as well. I thought that was like pretty cool. Um, it made my body appear straight. Um, so yeah, I personally think full length one all the way for everybody. I always recommend the full length one. As my GP said, if I ever wanted to feel sex again to get the meta, that meta is better and safer and more reliable. Yeah, uh, meta is the best result in terms of sensation. The only difference as far as I'm aware though, like for me, is that because the clitoris is buried, it's a little bit harder to achieve orgasm, or the way I like to word it is I last a little bit longer in bed. <laughs> Always look on the bright side, see? Uh, how do you cope with the fact that you can't produce sperm? To be honest, it's never crossed my mind. I've never been able to produce sperm, so... How can I miss what I never had? Doesn't, like... I don't think of it in that context. I think of it more in the... I will never be able to have my own children, ever. And that's, that's shit, you know. But then, you know, like, my stepbrother, my dad wasn't his biological father, and he loved him exactly the same as he loved me. And, you know, I've got loads of friends out there that have either adopted kids or they've, you know, got a sperm donor and stuff like that, and they would never love those kids any less, you know. Um, so why does it matter? It doesn't. You total off, totally pull off being bald. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 
If you ever have more questions on Meta, I know a YouTuber who recently went through his first operation. I'll look for it if you'd like. Oh, yes please. Thank you very much. Sex isn't everything in a relationship, Billy. No, but it's a very vital part of a relationship. Incredibly vital, in my opinion. Because, as I've always said, what is a relationship without sex? It's a friendship. And that's all well and good, but that's exactly what it is. It's a friendship. Um, so no, sex isn't everything, but it's quite a key part in, in my eyes. It's the true definition of making love. That's what you do. So it's quite important to me. Do you want to? Never seems to happen. Um, I got head to bed, mate. Busy day tomorrow. I'll drop your message on Snapchat, or Facebook. Have a good one, mate. And no worries, Jay. Good night. I think you're super brave for being so open about your story and what you're going through. Thank you, Kay. I'm gonna assume your name is. Can you play with your clit and release the frustration, aka sec sexual tension? Yes. Uh, took a while after the last operation. Not gonna lie. Took a while to be able to achieve anything. Um, but yeah, everything is hunky-dory now. Obviously, like I said, it's buried. You can't actually see it. Um, and for a while I thought, I swear to God, it was moving, but it doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I can. But obviously, you know, if I were to get into a relationship and they wanted to please me, for them, it would be a whole new learning curve because it's not like any other guy. It's not really like any other girl. It's kind of a bit like a trans man. Um... Could have frozen your eggs, but that adds so much more time to transitions. Yeah, well, that's the thing, is that when I was 16 and people didn't even know what the word transgender meant, my doctor actually very wrongfully told me uh, that if I were to either freeze my eggs or get pregnant or do anything like that, that I would not allow to be, uh, I would not allow to, I would not be allowed to transition, which is absolute bullshit. But obviously at the time, for me it was transition or don't fucking bother living. So I chose to transition. So I didn't want anything to jeopardize my transition. That was the options I was given. So I skipped it and I, I do wish I never, but how was I to know? It takes more than sperm to be a dad. I know that only too well. There are YouTube, YouTubers here in Sweden who do that posting on their YouTube channel once it's on via free and TV here in Sweden if you talk to them tell them a lot of people outside the UK can get help through it ah wicked good idea oh good idea that's a really good idea I'll, do, I'll get on that but if they really cared then they would wait for you to be ready and fully prepared for sex right uh yeah maybe I guess so but then you know it's even finding anyone that's remotely interested <laughs> right now so that's literally doesn't happen so um is what it is. I don't mind, I'm not rushing, I'm not searching, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm not as old as I look. I'm 28. 29 this year. By the way, for the Meta channel, it's Leo. Okay, wicked. Leo Matus? Matus? Okay, so, what just crossed my mind, uh, and don't take any offence, uh, if it does, but did you have a hysterectomy, or does the time of the month stop with T? Uh, both questions have the answer, yes, I did have a hysterectomy, I had that in stage one, but the the periods and that, they stop after you start testosterone. So I think I had two injections of testosterone and that was it, done, never seen one ever again, until I switched the type of testosterone I was taking, and then uh, it I had like some sort of monster period, um, and then never again after that, ever. I think it's been about four years since my last period. When taking tea, how much hornier do you get? <laughs> um, I would have said, before taking testosterone, that my sex drive was quite high. Since taking testosterone, I would say that maybe before, on a scale of 1 to 10, it was at about a 3. <laughs> and now I would say, and now I would say it's settled on like a 
seven or eight, maybe, maybe, probably eight, actually. If I'm totally honest, I remember the nurse asked me a question a little while ago, which suddenly slipped everything into place in my head. And the question, she asked me two questions, and they were, how high is your sex drive? And I remember going, oh my god, so high, through the roof, endless, endless sex drive. And then she said, how high is the need to have sex? And I was like, what a good question. Because it suddenly occurred to me that, yeah, my mind was going sex, sex, sex all the time, and I really just was so horny all the time, but the actual want, the drive to actually have sex wasn't there as much, if that makes sense. So, like, that thought would cross your mind where you think, like, well, your mind is like, you, you should probably have an orgasm today, it's, it's time. And then your mind goes to the next process of, can you really be bothered to have sex though, or should you just get it over and done with by yourself? Um, and I suddenly realised there was a lot of times when I thought I could just do this myself. <laughs> Sounds really bad, I know. I'm an awful person. Um, but it actually, there's a lot of trans guys I've spoken to, and they've all agreed with me, and they've basically said, yeah, actually, that's a good good point. Um, and even a load, load of my... Uh, like, uh, biologically born male friends, cis friends, um, the, the guys that is, they, even when I ask them, they, you could see it all fall into place in the he their head as well, because they're like, yeah, like sometimes, you know, I'm in bed with my girlfriend or whatever, and I think, oh, fuck, I'm so horny, but I just really don't want to have sex. I've gone bash run out of the bathroom. Um, so, yeah, weird, weird um, how that works, but yeah, it's still, it's settled quite high. Maybe a bit higher. Who knows? Uh, you have talked about stages one, three, and four, but what is stage two? So stage two is when this came off. This skin graft um, made my urethra. Um, so that was it, basically. They basically took the skin off my arm, made the urethra. And that was it. I actually suffered with post-op depression after stage two because... It seemed like I was in an awful lot of pain for nothing because uh, there was obviously no major steps forward. Like I couldn't stand to pee just yet and I couldn't um, do anything. Uh, so I suffered with post-op depression because of that. Uh, and I actually considered bringing my transition to a complete stop, but that was the depression talking. Is it ever hard for you to be so open about your transition? Do you ever regret how much you put online? Oh god, never. Ever, ever. Never regret what I put online. Ever. Um, I think the only time I've ever regretted something really is because I got banned from Facebook for like three months. Um, and the only reason I regretted that is not because, you know, my life is Facebook. Um, it was more because I was, I was getting the same messages, you know, that I get day in, day out of people basically saying, help me, you know, I need your help, are you there? Why are you answering me? you know, do you hate me and stuff like that, and I was just like, oh my god, I think the most frustrating thing about getting blocked on Facebook is the fact you can still see all of this, you can still see everything just unfolding right before your eyes, and there was nothing I can do about it, and there was people that depended on my answer, and I couldn't answer them, and I just found that so frustrating, and that's the only thing I ever regretted putting on Facebook was a picture of me in my pants, basically, showing showing the scar on my leg, um, and since then I've not put up anything anywhere near those lines because I just can't afford for that to happen again so yeah um, but no other than that never a great thing I can send you more info about it on Facebook if you want mate yes please because uh, your story needed to get out to people outside the UK yeah yeah please do yeah send me a message on Facebook I went to talk to my doctor about starting tea a few months ago oh. that's my alarm to stop talking I'll carry on in a minute. Um, went to talk to my doctor about starting tea a few months ago, and she said that I could get, I could get my period back regardless of being on tea. I don't know what your doctor was talking about. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's been some guys who've been known to have like four more after starting testosterone. That's the maximum I've ever heard. Your doctor was chatting shit. Um, put my phone in my pocket, man. After how many days do they remove the catheter? In which stage? Do you mean, maybe I might as well just say more. Stage one, three days. Stage two, three days again. What was it? Lies. Five days. 
I managed in hospital before I discharged myself. Um, so three days first one, five days second, third one, which is the one I just had a few months ago, that was three weeks to the day I had it in. It, they wanted me to keep it in for six weeks and I basically refused. So I took it out myself. That video is also on this YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called like how to remove super supra pubic catheter or something like that. Anyway, it was in my stomach and uh, they were like, we've booked you in for January the 5th. And I was like, hell no, it's not even Christmas yet. I'm not waiting that long. So yeah, I just took it out myself. Go and watch the video. It's quite interesting. Um, my girlfriend left me because I can't give her kids. And then I realised that I'm not biological male. It sucks. I want to adopt and I will love them unconditionally. But I will not be able to see a mini-me. God, that's like... That's hard, man. That's, um... Wow, shit. She left you because you couldn't give her kids. I'm not being funny, but she must have known right at the beginning you couldn't have given her kids. Like, why the fuck get with you? Oh, people like that just frustrate me. Like, this is why I'm so open. Like, I'm not even joking. If a girl come up to me later on tonight and said, Oh my god, you know, you're hot, let's go on a date. I'd be like, before you, um, you know, go writing shit in your diary, there's something you need to know. And that's literally how open I am. I will say it right there and then. Um, that's if, you know, she hasn't assumed I'm gay. Straight off the bat, which most people do. Oh well. Can you show the scar on your arm? Ta-da! So you've got the square here, and then the line up here where they took the the vein. So yeah. During the recovery from your top and bottom surgeries, did you need help from a friend, family member for the aftercare, or did you go it alone? I did all the aftercare myself. Um, I did obviously have my nurse appointments. I had them once a week, I think. Other than that, I did all the aftercare myself. Um, the only thing I had help with, which was from my girlfriend, um, was <laughs> coffee, sandwiches, stuff like that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to have cooked for myself or anything like that. Um, so I had to have help with that. But in regards to personal care, I didn't have any help with that. Any website you recommend for the for the information of phalloplasty? Yeah, I do. My Facebook page, um, my actual page, not my profile, um, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Billy Joe Newington. Um, if you go on the photo section, there's an album there called A Guide to Pubic Phalloplasty, I think, or A Guide to Phalloplasty. I think it covers all of them. I don't know, it's like, honestly, it's like 40 pages long, so check it out anyway. I've, I had to upload it in photo format, because back then, Facebook wouldn't allow me to upload like a document or anything. So yeah, it's in photo format. It's actually really informative, it's really, really good. Other than that, um, maybe check out, you know, videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, they're quite informative, they're quite cool. What happened here? Did you lost hair? Uh, that's what happened to my hair. I shaved it off. Um, please don't tell me I look bad. I don't think I could take it. <laughs> I go back to older videos of yours and the scar has healed very nicely. Well done, my friend. Thank you very much. It has healed much better than I thought it would, to be honest. Um, we'll send you a DM after this live. No problem. I won't be on much longer because not only have I probably bored the face off you guys, um, I need to go to work. <laughs> Why did you choose abdominal over RFF phalloplasty? As there is an arm scar both ways. Is there an advantage to abdominal fallow? I haven't decided which one of the three sites I want to use yet. Um, yeah, I know there's an arm scar, but it's nowhere near what it would be if I chose forearm phalloplasty, because if I had forearm, all of this would be gone. And I would, like, I've noticed some guys where it's like been a bump, you can quite clearly see there's been a graft. Um, for me, you know, all my scars, apart from this, all my scars are underneath my belt line. Happy days. Um, so that's personally why I chose pubic, and I didn't really want to lose all the tattoos, you know, like, I, I didn't care about that one, so that was why it was just better for me. Would you tattoo over the scar on your arm to cover it up? If so, what kind of design would you have? Uh, actually, something in between that. I am going to get a tattoo, but I'm not going to get a tattoo to cover it up. 
you know, I went through a shitload of pain to get to where I am today, and there's no way I'm covering that up anytime soon. So I am going to get a tattoo, and it's going to highlight the scar. It's going to bring it out more. Um, I was actually considering whether to get... Um, my initial idea was to get, you know, like the dotted line, going all the way around it, and then a tiny pair of scissors. And then saying cut here, um, like you see on the bottom of like a, I don't know, a pay slip or something. Um, that was my initial idea, but a, a few friends have suggested like uh, needle and thread going around and stuff like that. I don't know, I bet, you know, I'm going to highlight the scar because I think it deserves to be highlighted, the amount of pain I went through. If I could frame it, I would. <laughs> hey man, you're looking so good. You may remember me, I pop up from now and then. Needs in a pick me up right now, so it's nice to tune in to, to this to someone who gives me hope and makes me smile. Phoenix Terminal, yes, I remember you. Um, you know, feel free to drop me a message um, because, you know, if you want to talk to me, then that's cool. Drop me a message, I will chat to you. I'll, I'll give you some pick me ups. I've got some damn good memes on my phone. Um, but yeah, anything you want to talk to me about, Phoenix, honestly, like, hit me up, let me know. Uh, Warren, I had Radio 4 arm fallow, my arm scar is huge and weird looking. There you go. Actually, Warren, I, do you know what, I never looked at your uh, arm when we were doing the documentary. Um, for those who don't know, Warren, who just commented, um, he's actually in my documentary as well. I asked him to be a part of my documentary along with a few other guys. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. I can't wait for it to be released. Anyway, um, I've got to Lascar. Phoenix messaged me. Um, and I've got to get ready and go to work. Um, so I've bored you long enough. I'm going to leave you be. Thank you, though, everybody, for watching. Uh, it's been awesome. You've actually come up with some really shit hot good questions. Like, they're pretty good. Uh, the BBC will be impressed if they watch this. Um, so, um, I've got one minute. I'll get Obi. Come on in. So, Obi's been sat there the whole time we've been doing this video. Look how sleepy he is. So, yeah, um, I'll leave you guys to it, and, you know, I'll see you next time. I'll try and do an update more often. If you don't mind me asking, how is sensitivity and feeling with the fallow using pubic areas? Hi. Not a whole lot of information on this about pubic. To be honest, mate, there's not much sensitivity at all. Um, but it doesn't affect the sexual side of things, so, you know, don't worry. Um, I'll leave you guys to it. Honestly, I've got to go. Thank you so much. Um, you've been awesome. So, see you next time. Say bye, Obi. But like...